everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your Archer, and I'm so excited. This is a very special week. This week is Art Week, and it's Shark Week. So in celebration of Shark Week, which I'm a huge fan, I'm totally into it, I'm doing a shark-themed painting every day. Today is painting one. This is Sharky Night. This gorgeous painting is a Vincent Van Gogh-inspired version of a curious great white having a midnight splashy, splashy swim. These are very curious creatures, and I wanted to celebrate that about them. So I created this piece as a tribute to them. I hope you love painting and I'm gonna show you every single step of the process. You can create this fantastic painting at home, but that's not even all. Because also, if you want, you can follow me on Twitter and live tweet with me during the Shark Week show. Now, if you wanna know anything about anything I'm talking about in the show, definitely check the description below. That's where all the details are, links, information, everything that you can do this whole week is packed with shark art. So get your brushes, get your paints, and come Mako some art with me. Let's go! So let's look at laying in our canvas if you're not going to be using the traceable. I have a horizon line. It's about five inches up from the bottom. Just make sure that you give yourself a horizon line that's level. I'm going to lightly sketch that in, right? And I'm gonna wanna put my shark nose. He's gonna be down in the water and coming up. And he's about, for me, three fingers over. So how I do him is I give him a little point. And I'm gonna curve his little lines down. His nose comes at a point, arcs out, curves back, and then comes in. This is like that smile curve. And then an opposite direction curve to this nice fin that we have here. I'm gonna give him this really cool vortex mouth. So I'm going to want to make sure that I do a nice little opening where that vortex mouth is going to be there. And I'm going to give him some gums to put those teeth in. And I like to tell myself where that vortex is going to be. Right here above that, I'm going to put an eye in. The other lines you're going to want to think about is about a hand's width up from the right hand side. I'm going to make this mountain line. It curves down and wanders. Can you see it goes straight, curves, hump and down. Then it wanders up. Hills are very, very meandery. It can also help me, even though I'm laying in the stuff all in solid colors, to give yourself an idea of where your moon is going to be so you're happy with that placement. I'm going to come over, I'm going to put one star in, two stars in, three stars in, four stars in, and a little guiding line. This is going to be light because I'm going to be painting white over it, of the first swirl for the wind and the second swirl for my sharky night. Once those are in, then I can block in what's called the underpainting. This is sort of like building the puzzle real fast for you to layer all your paint on, and it's gonna be a lot of fun. I am going to get this number 10 Black Pearl Bright. I'm gonna dip this in the water, and I'm gonna paint in my uh, Starry Night Sky, which is gonna be my Thalo Blue and my Dogs Name Purple. This is going to make you can see I'm swirling that around here, right? My first dark color on my sky. I want this first color to be real deep, All right? So I've done that. Once I've got my brush loaded, I'm going to come over here. And I'm going to just paint in along this mountain edge right here. Doesn't have to be perfect. Paint around my moon. This is just about the canvas being this dark blue as a base. Lots has to happen, right? Once this paint is on, lots and lots, lots and lots. I'm gonna paint around my little swirls here, and one of my tricks is going to be, I'll leave a little bit of it not covered by my blue so I know where it is. So I'm going to be coming back with a white color. And you can see I'm making this, ooh, got some paint on my thumb, wide between the nose and here. All the rest of this is going to be blue, this dark, dark blue. Notice that I got a little water. I'm swirling it around. I'm showing you guys this just to help make sure that you're getting that great canvas coverage where the canvas is completely covered. And I'll just leave the tiniest little white spot wherever I think I'm going to put stars. And if that's hard, then you just paint them back in in just a second. So 
all good. Right now we just want to get this first coat, this first layer of our Sharky Nine in. This is definitely inspired a little bit by uh, Vincent Van Gogh and his very famous painting, Starry Night. Um, it's really fun to visit ideas like that. And it's fun to put some of the things that we're excited about in that. And I really was excited about putting the shark in here. You can see I'm not being that stressed about this. I might paint the little swirl, but see how I know where my swirls are now? It's going to be really easy to put them back in. And while I've got this color on my brush, and I've made sure all my canvas white is painted out, right? Where I'm painting over it. I'm going to get a little white here. And I'm going to make it quite light. And I'll just come up here with this light color on the edge of this brush, this bright, and just swirl it around. I'm going to be changing this a lot as my paint comes, but I've got to put these first colors in. And this is a great way to get that first layer of paint on the canvas. So you can see I'm on the edge here and I swirl around and go back. And I come up. See, you're going to get to make -oh some art with me. Oh yeah, that's happening all week. We're going to have park shark puns and all kinds of things. I'm excited to see you guys on Twitter. Be sure and come to the Twitter. The Twitter. Be sure to follow me on Twitter, which is at Art Sherpa. I'll be tweeting during the show. Um, you can check the description to get to the website where we have the links and times and all that information uh, about what we're doing. We're just celebrating all things Shark Week this week. Now just to show that where they are, I'm going to come back with my brush. I'm adding a little white to the corner. I'll come back and say, star was here. Star was right there. Maybe a little star here and another one right there. And so there my stars are. I'm going to rinse out my brush. Get all the pigment out and I'm going to come put some purple. Now this one I'm going to take a little of this quinacridone and my dog's name purple. I'm going to mix them together. I'm going to paint in this hill. All right, there we go. So this is going to be real fun, this nice coastline hill that we're going to have. There we go. Just paint in that hill. This is putting the puzzle piece of our painting in, right? Don't be real stressed about this. Right now you're just building the foundation of the painting. Lots of layers to come. You're just wanting to get these all worked out together. That's pretty nice. My next color doesn't have any purple in it, so I'm going to rinse my brush out again. And I'm worried that I got a lot of pigment on it, so I'm going to switch brushes. So either it's a great time to get clean water or to switch brushes just to make sure that the pigment or the color that you had from previous isn't contaminating the next mix that you're trying to do. So I'm going to grab, let's see here, I'm going to get a, like a, oh, here we go. I don't know, I want another number 10. I think I'll, I'll take it down smaller. I'm going to get a number 8. Right. Sometimes I like to reduce the size of my brush to make it easier to work around the angles and corners that I have. So I've gotten the water there and drug off the extra. I'm trying to avoid the purple that I have right here because I want this bright marine color, right? There we go. Now I'm going to paint all of this. And with this bright marine color, I'm going to paint around my fabulous Sharky Night shark. Now, in my mind, he was a great white. And he's having a little, he's being very playful. I'd like to say that 
All of our sharks this week are going to be very playful sharks, even though they may be showing us their toothy smiles and they may be doing sharky things. They're being very playful. It's a very happy shark and he's just feeling splashy. I'm sure you can relate to that. We all feel splashy from time to time. And I'm just painting this all in with this very deep blue. This sort of marine color that is the phthalo green and the phthalo blue. I'm going to avoid some of his mouth and I'm going to put a wave up here maybe that comes across him. I'll be defining that more later, but all the rest is going to be, like I'm using the edge of my brush to paint around him, painting on the flat to get that nice edge there. Just paint this all in. Now a tip, which will help you be more successful and happy with your painting, is where you have big areas of water, make sure you have horizontal brush strokes. I have to obviously curve a stroke sometimes to get around a curved object, but I'll immediately try to level out the overall impression of my paint um, whenever I'm working with water. At first, even if I start building it up in a minute, especially in a very creative piece like this, where we're doing all these sort of expressive strokes, just painting all this base in. I'm gonna follow that wave. And there's gonna be more waves. There's gonna be more stuff. I'm just making sure that I've got the basis of the colors that I want, where I want them, as I want them. All right. I feel like all that white canvas is covered well, so I can rinse out my brush really, really, really well. Now, I'm gonna get my, just my quinacridone. Maybe add just a smidge of the yellow to it to warm it up, like you do. But it's still gonna be very pink, very red. And I'm gonna make sure that I paint inside the mouth This bright color. It's okay that like if a little of the blue picks up and makes kind of a purple in the mouth, don't be worried about that. We've got a lot of layers in the mouth and we just want a certain feeling. And now I'm going to get a little of the white on my brush, see like I have, and come along this edge here. Just paint the gums in a little bit. And again on the edge there. So those are sort of painted in. I'm gonna rinse out my brush. Now, I like to do, I've got my little black. I don't want too much black on my brush, but I've got to get his basis in, so I'm going to add a little blue. I don't want him to be just pure black. And I'm going to leave his gray. So there's two tones to him. So I'm going to come up on the edge of my brush. And I'm going to come around his outline first. First, this outer edge. Just make sure I've got nice coverage and a nice sharky line that I'm happy with. All right? There we go. All the canvas is covered. I'm going to come around the wave here. Lots to say about him in a minute. But you know, I've got to get the basis of him in. I get some more of this blue and, and black. And now I'm going to show where he's got this lighter color in. So I'm going to come up here, start about the midpoint, and make sort of an ellipse around his mouth, and then down here, leaving some area for the gray. And I will paint in 
I'm going to put his eye back in a little bit later. If you're worried about, you know, keeping it in, you can leave that painted, like, paint around it. It's okay. It's just real easy for me to put it back in. I'm painting all in the nose here. Now I've got to paint, add some white to this for the gray. All right, get the nice gray. This is much lighter. I can adjust a lot of this. So one of the reasons I'm not tense at this stage is if like right here I painted out a little black, it's real easy for me to put it back in during our second layer. I'm just trying to block in where objects are. on this painting. That's all I'm doing. I'm blocking it in. Look, just coming across, just using my brush to block it in. And if I want to make the mouth bigger or change the line of the gray, that's easy for me to do later. And so I don't have to be that stressed about that. I'm going to rinse this out. And I think the last thing that I want to paint in on my underpainting, I'm going to get a small brush. In this case, I'll get a number six bright. This is a bristle on. I'm going to get this wet. And I'm going to add a little of the quinacridone to my yellow to, to make it a little more orange. I'm going to come here to my moon and just put that first layer in. where I have that. This is just like a little C. I might add this yellow to where I have my stars put in. So now I have that rinsing out my brush. This is a great time to get fresh water so all your colors stay really vibrant through the painting process. So you and me, let's go get fresh water and I'm gonna meet you back at the easel right now. It's a good time to rinse out your brushes too. So now it's time to twinkle up our stars and put in all of that kind of really great starry night essence that I think makes this painting a lot of fun. Let's get to the next part. Over here, I have smaller brushes for acrylic painting. I'm gonna be using small brights. I'm gonna be working mostly in number two brights. This is a number two black pearl. I'm gonna get this slightly damp and I'm going to come and get some lighter color. I'm gonna take just the phthalo blue and a little white and see how this makes a nice lighter color and I'm going to start twinkling up my sky. So pick a star and I like to make these little dashes around my star. See these little dashes? Just little dashes. Now when I get to a good, like, a, like the halfway point here, I'm going to start wanting to make my circles around this star so that they can bump into each other. I like to weave them together a little bit like a basket. You may have a very neat starry night style. You know, there really isn't a right or wrong way to do this. So don't be critical of yourself. I'm going to leave a little space here for around my wind as I'm coming around. I'll come into this little crease right here. You can come right into the wind that you're going to have. See how I'm pulling that right in, those dashes, and then I'm going to come around. All right. Just pulling this around. And now I've got this nice shape so you can decide how you want to fill in between your stars. How that sky fills in. And that's how I get that done. Let's take some of this around here. I'll bring some of this down even between these two. Around this star. Coming under here, 
and see how this is just done. Just filling those spots in. I'm just dashing around the star. Just my blue and my white coming around my moon. Just bringing those dashes everywhere that they should go. And along the, the hilltop is nice. Once I have those filled in, I'm gonna get a little of my purple and even a little of my quinacridone Mix them together and add a smidge of white to it. Come up under the wind, adding some of this color. It can come a couple places around. I'll put this around my stars. Just layering up the star energy. Rinse that out. Now let's get some blue into our white. We want it to be quite light. Start putting in our blistery, blustery wind that's blowing. Following the curve of our wonderful wind blow here and make sure that you're just doing little dashes. You can be very neat with these. You can be very expressive and loose with these. They can be long, they can be short. However you want them to be. To just bluster them around. Just blustering them around. can blow up into the sky a little bit to blend these two areas together if you'd like them to. I like to take this very, very light color Add a little bit of it around the sky. If your purple is still wet, they'll blend together. So it might be a good idea to give my painting a dry so I can get my bright blues popping. Okay.
Let's keep painting. And that's just something that might happen. Sometimes you want the color to mix on the canvas. Sometimes you don't. If it starts happening, you're like, you don't want it, just dry the painting. It's real easy to, at least in the world of art, have a lot of control over what happens in our creative space. So if you're seeing something you don't like, you can usually just change directions as you want to. So I don't take this too far out into the dark, dark sky. I just want this sort of like implied radiating light. These are the stars vibrating in the sky above our little sharky shark who's having a beautiful night swim. And how must night nice is it be to be a shark at night? I mean, you, you may or may not want to share water with a shark at night. I don't know. But for the shark, it's got to be pretty nice, isn't it? cool and calm and quiet. You're probably a pretty zen creature. All right. You know, who knows how fast he's swimming. But tonight, if you follow me on Twitter, which is at Art Sherpa, we're going to see Michael Phelps swim with the shark. So that'll be interesting. Or see if he, I don't know if they're going to actually make him swim with the shark. I'm kind of curious. I am reserving my expectations, you know, but if you'd like to do that with me, watch with me. Definitely, definitely follow me on Twitter. I'm rinsing out my brush. Now I'm going to put one last little blustery coat on my blowing wind of just pure white. I know it can seem that there's a lot going on in these skies. And there is. They're actually kind of a lot of fun to do. I really have enjoyed this since I did my Van Gogh sunflowers so long ago on YouTube. So I'm sort of happy to be back here painting something a little Van Gogh-ish. You know, of course you could skip our friend if you wanted to. I don't know why you would want to, but you might. And it's your painting. Everything here belongs to you. I'm just guiding you through. All right, so I really like that. Now I'm going to add the light in my stars to my sky. I'm going to get a little of my yellow and my white together. I'm going to make sure my star in the center is pretty nice. I'm going to add just a few bits a banding yellow out. I can tell you right now, it can get fun. I'm gonna go into my moon. Make sure this has got a nice second coat on it. It can get fun to add pink or orange or different colors all around. I've seen a lot of really cool stuff. You do what feels good to you. You want to put some pink in the sky? You can pink in the sky. You want to put some orange in the sky? Oh. However your stars twinkle at night, it is perfectly, awesomely acceptable. You twinkle how you want to twinkle. I'll twinkle how I want to twinkle. And we'll all have a good time painting. All right. So take a minute and look at your sky and be like, you know, do you feel really good about how that is? If you do, which I do, you can move on to the mountain, which is going to be really fun to put in. So what I really loved about this is I went into my purple and my quinacridone here and I made a very kind of like much more magenta color and I got a little white into it so I could really see it. And then I'm going to come along the top of the mountain on the edge of my brush and right here at the middle point I'm going to wander a hill down. Top of the mountain, 
Maybe there's another little bit there. See how I'm creating this contrast? Then I can come in and I'm going to just pull down. These are like the strokes in the sky, but they're looser, right? Just pulling that down. Maybe get a little more magenta on my brush. I can pull that down. Just at the top here. And then I can come back if I want to with some just purple and a little white. The white helps the purple show up. Otherwise, purple, this purple can feel almost like a black to the eye. So it can help to add a little white to it so you can see that it's purple. Or you can even use it like a black and then it'll just reflect a little bit purple every once in a while, which some people really, really like. Rinse that out really, really, really well. And then I'm going to put what is like my interpretation of the moonlight reflecting on the hill. So what I did is I took a little of my quinacridone and a little of my yellow. And I made this sort of peach color and I added some white to it, which I thought was pretty nice. And I came across the top here. And then just added a couple little brush strokes, see, of the moonlight reflecting on this hill in the same sort of little Van Gogh stroke. Just pulling that down, just at the top, just something nice. Now, the back, the water. So we're going to push that water far away, but we're going to keep that Van Gogh stroke going. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be really easy. Hopefully you're breathing in. You're breathing deep. You're in the deep. You're going dun -a, dun -a, almost done with my painting. Dun -a. I know. It's just a whole thing. I'm doing it. I know I'm doing it. All right. So I'm going to take a little of my blue and a little of my green. And in, I'm going to add, even in this case, just a little bit of purple to it. See that over here? This is my dark ocean color. It's going to be the first color I'm putting down. I'm going to go across my horizon line and I'm going to make dashes of this dark, dark color to just past his fin here, okay? Just dashing that with my small brush. Whole thing. Don't try to paint the whole thing out. This is just like the sky. We are going to have waves in front of it, but this is what we're going to weave them into. A little green, a little blue, a little purple, pushing that sky back. You may need to level this, like mine got a little unlevel. So I'm going to just make sure that it's nice and level. And pulling in. Now I'm okay if my dash is kind of going to my shark space a little bit, and that's because I'm going to be painting a second coat on him and making him cute and shiny and happy and swimmy. All those things, that's what he's going to be, right? Now, while this is all still wet, and I don't mind that this is still wet, I'm going to get my blue and my green together. It's my phthalo blue and my phthalo green, and I'm going to add a little white to it. All right. Get this nice, deep aquatic color. There we go. And I'm going to come back here, and I'm going to add these dashes in with my dark dashes. All right. Just add a little more green to it. Just Dashing out here in the background. Dash, 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 dash. Just doing these little dabs. If you've done the Monet's with me, if you've done any of the Van Gogh pieces with me, you're very familiar with this. Super fun, relaxing thing to do. I'm going to reload my brush. That's why I rinsed out. It wasn't actually to change color. It's because the brush was feeling heavy. And that's the thing I'll do if my brush feels heavy. 
just pushing this out there. So I'm weaving those two colors together. And then I can do a really fun thing. Get my brush really wet. I'm gonna get just a little yellow on here without my orange. Just a little yellow, maybe a little white. And I'm gonna come here in the water. I'm gonna add some dabs of the moonlight reflection that's back here, that's sparkling. It's gonna be peeking out from the waves, right? Maybe little bits of that water here and there, see? All right. Now, I'm really low on blue, and it's good to make sure that you don't have too much paint out, but you want enough to do the task at hand. So I'm gonna put a little more of my blue over here. I okay, got my blue and my green. There we go. Blue and my green. That's my phthalo turquoise. And I'm gonna come here in my little shark land and I'm going to start kind of adding a little curve to my woven stroke. All right, little curve. See the slight curve to it? It's just a little more energetic in the water. Just a little more energetic. And I'm gonna come in and get some purple on here and add some really deep, like even right around this fin. Curved, can you see it's curved? This is just creating a little bit of energy it's gonna be right here. So let's match that right up here. Do the same thing. A little green, a little blue. A little more energetic coming up through here. A little more energetic. Just a little bit more energetic. Get your deeper color. Add that dark, churny, mysterious water to the space. Rinsing out. One last little reflection right here, and then we're gonna get into our shark. So I'm gonna see if I can find any good white paint that I haven't gotten all crazy messy. And I'm gonna come and add just a little bit of an even brighter moon reflection dancing in the water up this way. Isn't that beautiful? All right. Now is another good time to freshen up your water, change that water out, rinse any brushes out if you're gonna be using one or two brushes. If you don't have like a lot of brushes to go to, I'm gonna meet you right back at the easel. So we're ready to get started again. And I just wanna remind you, remember, we're gonna have a new shark painting every day this week. Every day, so you've got to keep coming back. Some of them are going to be short. Some of them are going to be more involved. Every kind of shark, you're going to really love it. Let's finish up our shark while we're thinking about all the other cool shark stuff we could be doing this week. All right, so I've got my palette. I kind of freshened up some of my paint so that I had enough. And I'm going to go back, still working my number two bright. I'm going to get it wet and drag off a little extra water. And I'm going to go back into my blue and black mixture, right? Which was my not just black. It was kind of like a bluish gray. All right, mixing that up. And I'm going to come here and make sure that he's all painted how I want him to. So I'm gonna come along the outside edge with his dark line. I lost a little of his dark line. And just make sure that I have him edged out how I want him to be, all right? Doesn't have to be perfect, but I want him to have a nice little look. And when I'm happy with that, I'm gonna make sure I have a nice amount of blue in my mix and I'm gonna get some white. And this is gonna make a blue gray. I'm gonna come here at his nose. Maybe it's gonna go around a little bit and I'm gonna just follow the curve of him. All right, just curving him around. 
Now down here I know he's going to have his little eyeball, right? So I can just very carefully put that back. You still have yours, that's good. And I just want to make sure that I put this gray a little bit around his eye. I'm just dashing this down. Okay. This dark gray color. Just weaving this in. He's got a lot of personality. He's got a lot of character. And I want to make sure that that shows. You know, he's not, he's very adventurous. You know, he swims the seas. He's curious. Again, it may not be fun to have a curious shark discover you, but maybe it would be. Maybe you're somebody who studies sharks and you're super excited when they come visit you. That could happen. I'm going to add a little purple to my black. You might be noticing I'm not leaving my black just black. And that's a little trick that I've got. You can use black. I don't think there's anything wrong with black, but it's fun to change it up a bit. I'm going to just around his little mouth here, kind of weave in some of these black dashes that show his dark, sharky skin. Maybe I'm going to paint inside his eye with this darker color. Just pulling that along his skin. A little purple, a little black. Let's make sure his fin is nice and... He's a very important figure in our painting, so we want him to Look as interesting as possible, right? Just dashing that in. Bang going your little shark up. All right. You got that. One nice touch before I let him dry for the white highlight is I think it's nice to take a bluer version of this where it's really blue and just a little black. See like this and add a very light highlight of that, even lighter, just along the top, like he's catching a little moonlight. And maybe even a little at the nose, right? Along the top of the fin. And we'll add some white in just a second, but right now we've got to let this rest and rinse this out. Let's work in our nice kind of sharky skin here. So I'm going to take a little of my yellow, interestingly enough. And again, you can kind of catch my little tricks here, adding it to my black. And then I'm going to add some white to it. Let's come along here. Just make sure we're looking how we want to look, and we're going to be just dashing that. So it's not a perfect painted in anything. We're just coming along, getting that second tone. Coming along here. You can take some of that into his darker skin color. And when he's rinse that out. And then it's nice to come with an even lighter color over the top, I think. And I'm going to focus that here. Okay. And some down here. So this is more gray, right? There we go. the pink. So start with a little of your quinacridone and some of your white. And I'm going to make sure I have a nice, these are the gums and I want to make sure that my gums are nice coming around. They're going to stand out from this really interesting mouth that we designed for him. Okay. And I got to make sure I have enough to attach some really fun teeth to. 
Because a shark without his teeth is actually a very sad shark. They need their teeth. It's very important. So I'm going to rinse that out and get just some white with a little of the pink in it, right? And you can even put some of the purple in there. So it's a slightly different color. You just want it to really stand out from what's underneath it. I'm going to just dash this right here so that he's tied in to the, his little world. Rinse that out. And then we're going to blend our dark shadow color in, which is the quinacridone and the purple. Because he's got a slight shadow, right, under his lip. Right, his gum line. Now I think it can be interesting to come right here, and I still have my little dot, and then I'm going to just paint in his little hungry belly vortex. He's out there tasting the sea, exploring the world. It's fun to sort of blend those out. And as I'm blending them, I'm going to get more and more magenta. All right, blending that out. Blending out the vortex. Blending it out. Too much purple on it, just rinse out. Wipe off my brush. Get some more magenta. Just painting in the vortex. It's leading to his hungry, hungry belly. You can come along his gums and make that kind of neat and tidy. So his teeth really pop out against it. And we get a little yellow on there. My magenta. Let's start. Get a little white, a little yellow, a little white. Just start talking about the curve of this vortex. See, I'm being very soft, very gentle. Creating value. Making nice rounded Rounded, rounded. Look at that. See, it's starting to show up. This is about just painting soft, rounded strokes. We're going to come back with a little orange and a little more magenta after this dries a bit. But now he should be dry enough for us to come back with a little bit of white, just right on our brush. Come right up to his nose. And make that high reflection just right here and down a little bit. Maybe another little at uh, his little fin coming back over his eye. We'll do the last finishing touches when we put in the teeth. But these are what he has to have painted in so we can put in his water. All right. This is a good time to dry your canvas. Okay. Let's do a couple of things. First, now that our canvas is dry, let's put out, I'm going to put out the soft body paint. You can use your regular white paint. You can use craft paint. I just really like to use this, especially when I'm doing detail work. And I'm going to load this up on this brush. This is a number zero black pearl round. But basically what this is, is a small detail. And I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to come around his eye. And I'm going to make a nice little outline. See, now you can really see his little eye. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to give him some toofy toofs. I like to start slightly, if this is the center of his nose, slightly off center. And remember, sharks have rows of teeth. So the thing that I like to do is kind of have some teeth that are smaller and maybe farther back and then some that are far forward. And I even have some shark teeth on my desk here, right here. So you could see what those shapes are like. 
little added touch that I have for you. So I'm going to put some nice curve. I like to curve the teeth. All right, maybe a little hidden tooth. This is the fun part. His toofy, toofy smile. Just give him a happy, I'm like making them a little smaller as they're coming around. It's his toofy, toofy smile. Maybe you didn't know he was smiling at you, but he was. But this is in a painting, not nature. Don't pet sharks in nature. Don't eat paint, don't pet sharks. Unless it's your job to pet your shark. And I don't know anything about that, and you're in charge. But regular people, it's not your job to pet the sharks. <laughs> and just swim out on your paddleboard and be like, I'm gonna just meet this shark and give him a pet. Wild animals want to be left alone. All right. <laughs> so here we go. We're just giving him a nice, respectful row of teeth. Having a good time giving him that. While those are drying, I rinse this out, we can come in and add a little fire to his vortex, his little mouth vortex. I'm gonna switch out to some cleaner water for this last little leg of the painting. We're nearly done. I'm gonna take a little of my quinacridone and some of my red. I mean, a little of my quinacridone and some of my yellow, cadred yellow. I'm gonna come here and I'm going to just add this Right little fire coming around here. I didn't really have as much as I wanted to, so I just want to make sure that that's right there. It's sort of reflective of the, the universe, right? His little mouth. All right, I feel good about that. It's a touch I wanted. Now that everything's dry, I can start putting in the last layer which is the splashy, splashy, cool waves and surf. And they're totally a lot of fun to paint. So let me show you how I'm gonna do that. I have taken some chalk and I have sharpened it. And I'm gonna come here above his fin, right? These are all gonna be above his fin. And I'm going to curl up some waves. See that? And I'm gonna finish that little line of waves over here. And then, let me look at my reference. I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna do a similar thing. I'm gonna curl up some waves here. So this is a little splash here, and it goes down and up and out. So we have these two layers of waves that we get to paint in, and these are super fun, these are super easy, and we get to do it with a bigger brush. So I've got this number six ruby satin. And this is nice bright. I'm gonna get this wet here and I'm gonna come do my bigger upfront waves. I'm gonna mix my green and my blue and make my thalo turquoise again, All right? And I'm going to start painting in my dashes coming up these waves. I'm so glad that I have the dark green underpainting that's gonna help this water get darker and darker and darker. This is what I'm doing, I'm just painting in this darker part. And then I'll switch to my number two in just a second. You can use a number four, that would also be okay. Just painting this in. A Little more blue. If you need a little white, you can get it. Just right here, see at the top, just painting out that. Just painting this right here. And then I'm going to start doing the big strokes, these big ocean strokes, look at these, sort of back and forth. They're a little more green. Let's paint up here, getting my paint. I'm just painting this way. The little bit of white is giving me some coverage and I can come back with some darker colors, no problem. We're just getting that first layer in. And let's come in the back here. We're gonna do that with our smaller brush. So we're gonna keep doing this with our bigger brush. Let's get some of our purple and some blue. We may need to put out some more blue. Now let's come right here between these two waves and let's give the deep sea water. See this right here is the purple and the blue. 
right between these two. Let's put out some more blue. If you need it, you got to put it out. We'll put these close to each other. So you can get your blue and your green and you're making your dark oceanic color. Let's bring this up the top here, but don't go all the way up. We're just building the water. There's some nice dark water right here as these waves are crashing down. Like that. And then maybe a little more coming off here. Let's see, curve, curve brush stroke. And brushing it off. Building up those layers. Building up this layer. You can curve right up that wave where you want to with that dark color. Making these dark oceanic colors. Just stroking along the bottom. I want the bottom of my canvas to be my darkest. And we're building it up. So once I have that base, I'm going to switch back into my small brush again. Work this back line, let this front line rest so that I can come back and froth it up. Let's work our back line. And our back line has a similar thing. We've got the blue and the purple and maybe a little bit of green for a deep water color. And I can come along here without taking all of my brush strokes out that I put in earlier. And right at the base of these waves, I'm just brushing up this darker color. Having some fun. Maybe down through here, brushing it up. A little bit here. Just brush it up. So we haven't taken out our dashes that we put in earlier. I'm going to rinse this out. And I'm going to mix a little of my green and a little of my blue, making my thalo turquoise. Go ahead and add some white to that. Right, get that coverage up. There we go, there's a color that I like. Come up the back of the wave. I'm gonna flick that out. And then just blend those couple little brush strokes there, come up the back of the wave. Get a little green on that one. And just flick that out. You can always blend a few of these lighter colors through your dashes. Up the back of the wave with this lighter color. See, I'm just flicking that out, but I'm leaving the curve. Just flicking that out. Let's take a little of that green, a little of that blue, some of that white, very ocean color. And curl that around there and just dash that down. Just take that bright highlight. Right off the edge. See how we're doing? Just dashing that down around the back. Starting to see those now, right? Let's put some of that here. Flick, 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 flick off. Just up the front and a little bit of froth. Here and there happening. See? Just working that around. If you need some more dark, and I recommend that you keep the front of the wave, get some of your blue. There you go. Blending it out. Blending up the wave. So even though that these are very abstracted waves, we're still like darkening the foot, lightening the top like we do. Right? I'm gonna let those rest. 
so we can add the very, very bright highlight colors that you might expect to see on those distant waves. And let's make these some special waves up front. So we've got our green and our blue. We'll come together and make our turquoise. Add just a smidge of white to it so we can see it. We're going to just come right up. I'm going to flick right in front of his face a little bit. And just dash this down. Make some little brush strokes here. Keeping that color dark though. Lightening it up when I get up here. Just pulling it along. And then let's do our little dashes in the water. We go on up. And down again. Just coloring it all in, right? Put those nice colors in. Those greens and those aquatic colors. That one's more green, so I'm working that through. This is really going to come together as we add a little dark purple in there a couple places. So I'm going to just make sure that this base of this wave is very dark right here. Right? Just here and there, adding that. These should be fairly, fairly light and dry at this point. So you can get your white. It doesn't need to be perfect white, like you can have some blue and stuff on it. Come at the top of your wave. You're just going to flick off a little of that color. See? Just at the top where the water is breaking. There you go. Splashy, splashy. We come here. Let's add a little of that down the front and some of that here. This white water back up here and splashy, splashy off the front. Splash, 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 splash. Because he's swimming, right? Actively swimming. Let's put some. There we go. Just following the lines of the water. Just doing some churning water here. And as soon as you're happy with your ocean, you can grab your liner, your small detail brush. Drop that in your signing paint and come put your maker's mark on here. You have done Sharky Night. You've done Sharky Night. You Van Gogh the shark. You survived the bite of the great white. <laughs> you have done it. I hope today was a good day. It's the first of a whole week of this. I want to see you all week. So keep coming back to see what kind of cool shark fun we're going to do. Some of the lessons are going to be real short. Some of them are going to be these gorgeous paintings you want to hang all over your wall and give to all your friends. I want you guys to be good to yourselves, be good to the oceans. And I want to see you guys at the easel really, really soon. Bye-bye.